I know what you're thinking, but trust me, this is a thing. It's a thing. It's mathematically valid. Uh, the catch is it's valid for a class of integrals called product integrals. Now, I did a video a few days back in which I developed the case for product integrals and later established a relation between the product integral and the classic Riemann integral. And I've linked that video in the description below. So just a quick recap. The product integral is defined as the integral of a function f of x to the dx. And it's related to the classic Riemann integral by e to the Riemann integral of the logarithm of the same function f of x with respect to x. Now, this definition in itself seems pretty insane. I mean, you have this very strange structure on the left-hand side where the differential element is being treated as an exponent. And on the right-hand side, although you just have e's and logs and Riemann integrals, I mean, you just have the standard stuff, the context in which they're all put together makes this pretty wacky. So for some notation in this video, I'm going to denote the product integral of f of x by this little pi sign down here. So here we go. That's the notation. That's the notation we're going to be using. And this structure here, this structure involving e to the integral of log f of x, this very structure allows for some really surprising and satisfying properties of the product integral especially regarding product rules and quotient rules that we're going to discuss with examples and it also gives you some strange results for simple functions by simple or elementary functions i'm talking about you know the classics that we learned in basic calculus like f of x equal to x to the n where n is not equal to negative one so the product integral formu formulation gives you some pretty nice results. And first up, we're going to be talking about that product rule stuff you saw in the thumbnail. So the product integral of the product of functions f of x and g of x is equal to e to the integral of log f of x times g of x. And because of the properties of the natural logarithm, you can write this log of products as the sum of individual logarithms. So you have e to the integral of log f of x plus log g of x integration with respect to x up there. And because of the linearity of the integral operator, we have e to the natural logarithm of f of x dx plus the integral of the logarithm of g of x with respect to x. And now making use of the properties of the exponential function, we can write this as a product of exponential functions, one with the argument being the integral of log f of x, and the other having the argument equal to the integral of log g of x. And we know what this is equal to, right? We know that this here is equal to the product integral of the function f of x. And by the same token, this here is the product integral of the function g of x. So this gives you the result that the product integral of the product of functions f of x and g of x equals the product of the individual product integrals. With the same approach, you can define a quotient rule for integrals. So the product integral of f of x by g of x equals e to the integral of log f of x by g of x. And once again, making use of the properties of the natural logarithm, as well as the linearity of the integral operator, you have the integral of log f of x minus the integral of log g of x as the argument of the exponential function. And once again, making use of the properties of the exponential function, you can write this as e to the log f of x dx times e to the negative of the integral of log g of x dx. And we know that this can also be written as e to the integral of log f of x dx divided by e to the integral of log g of x dx. And once again, you have this incredibly satisfying result 
of the product integral of f of x by g of x being equal to the product integral of f of x divided by the product integral of g of x. I mean, seriously, this seems too good to be true. I mean, you don't even have such simple formulae for differentiation, correct? So this seems pretty damn cool. And now for an example, suppose you have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of some strange function like x squared times e to the negative x times sine of x to the dx. Now this here is the product integral of the product of three different functions. So we can write this as the product integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times the product integral of e to the negative x times the product integral of the sine of x. And again, of course, you have the limits of integration as being 0 and pi by 2. So we can write this as e to the logarithm to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of x squared with respect to x times e to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of e to the negative x dx times e to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of sine of x with respect to x, I've run out of space to be honest. Anyway, so this here can be written as e to the twice of this integral. That's a horrible little uh, arrow to show direction where I'm just writing the exponent of the argument as a coefficient of the log. So this on integration will give you x times the natural log of x minus x. And the limits of integration are of course 0 and pi by 2. Okay, cool. This here will give you e to the negative x with uh, negative x squared by 2 rather with 0 and pi by 2 as the limits. And then this here is one of Euler's log trig integrals, which in this case evaluates to pi by 2 times the natural log of 1 by 2. Once you plug in all the limits, you're going to get e to the pi times the natural log of uh, pi by 2 minus pi times e to the negative pi squared by 2 times e to the pi by 2 times the natural logarithm of 1 by 2. No, wait, it's going to be pi squared by 8, right? Pi squared by 4, one half of it, pi squared by 8. Okay, cool. And, what, and once you multiply all these exponential terms, you're just going to get e to the pi times the natural log of pi by 2 minus pi minus pi squared by 8 plus pi by 2 times the natural logarithm of 1 by 2. So we had this integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x squared times e to the x times sine x to the dx that at first sight seems like a formidable adversary, but because of the development of the product integral, this was easy. It wasn't hard at all. It was a piece of cake. And similarly, you can have some more fun with product integrals. For example, you can verify that the product integral of 1 by f of x equals the reciprocal of the product integral of f of x itself. And this is pretty awesome because in the last video, remember that we integrated from 0 to pi by 2 sine x to the dx. So if we replace sine by the cosecant, then in that case you have the reciprocal of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine x to the dx. So you just take the answer from that video and reciprocate it and that will give you the square root of 2 to the pi. Again, a very nice consequence of the formulation of product integrals. Furthermore, you can take familiar functions like f of x being equal to x to the n and see the effect of the product integral on them. So if you apply the product integral to x to the n, then you get e to the integral of log x to the n with respect to x. And because of the properties of the natural logarithm, you can write this n as a coefficient. So on integrating the logarithm, you have e to the n times x times the natural log of x minus x plus c. So you can write e to the c as a different constant altogether. Let's just write it as a. So this is a nice result for a familiar looking function. 
in a different context of integration, that is. And furthermore, you can actually derive some cool results like integrals that are otherwise a bit more tricky. For example, uh, remember how we integrated the square root of the tangent of x? So take that one step further and integrate between 0 and pi by 2 the nth root of the tangent of x. So this is equal to e to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the logarithm of the tangent of x to the 1 by n. And once again, you can write this as a coefficient and using the properties of the logarithm, you have e to the 1 by n times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the natural logarithm. Now, tangent is sine over cosine, so you can write this as log sine x and subtract it and subtract from it uh, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log cosine x dx and we know from Euler's log trig integrals that these two integrals are exactly the same so they cancel out and you have e to the 1 by n times 0 which is 0 and you get the result that this integral the integral from 0 to pi by 2 talking about the the product integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the nth root of tangent x equals 1 which is again quite fascinating. These are some really nice properties. And let me know in the comment section if you find any more of any more satisfying or mind-boggling properties of the product integral. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.